This is the third and final video in the vasoactive drug series. And this video will focus on calcium channel drugs. So a brief overview of what we've talked about in the last two videos. Um, in these, this series, we've talked about alpha, beta, and calcium, um, ABCs for a mnemonic. Um, we talked about alpha drugs, type A people having a tight squeeze, uh, vasoconstriction, A for afterload, increases your afterload, um, and they all end in efferin, most of them do, um, because type A people are going to efferin get an A on this test. Uh, a little stressed out. Um, alpha 2 blocks your alpha 1, um, clonidine and prestex are going to act centrally, so you're going to have some sedation as well. In the beta category, um, beta videos, we talked about B for beating and breathing. Uh, beta 1 and beta 2, you have one heart and two lungs. So beta 1 is on your heart, beta 2 is on your lungs. Um, dope and dobe for dopamine and dobutamine. Sounds like your heart beating, so you can remember that these drugs act on your beta receptors. Uh, specifically beta 1. Um, and then dopamine versus dobutamine is an important distinction. Um, I know in the other video I said dopamine being a catecholamine, which is true, um, although dobutamine also ends in amine, so that doesn't necessarily help you. Another trick uh, could be that dobutamine is better buter for CHF um, versus dopamine is more of a presser um, and is used differently, along with epinephrine and norepinephrine. In the beta blocker category, we talked about beta blockers being baby blockers because it causes impotence. Uh, when you tell that joke to people, they lull, which is the ending for beta blockers. Uh, we talked about cardioselective beta blockers versus non-cardioselective beta blockers. Um, cardioselective beta blockers are metoprolol, atenolol, and esmolol because if you met a 10 on a 0 to 10 scale and found them mesmerizing, esmolyrezing, um, you could be cardioselective towards them and want to go out with them. Uh, Non-cardioselective beta blockers are all the other lulls. Um, and then you can see here the calcium mnemonics, which we'll go over in a minute. So this video will be primarily about calcium. So just like before, we have a category where we bind to and increase our sympathetic nervous system response. And then we also have a category down below where we will decrease our sympathetic nervous system response and we will block these receptors. So again, it's important to note where these calcium channels, calcium receptors, are located. Um, so think back to your human physiology class, however long ago that might have been. Calcium is integral in muscle contraction, um, sodium, potassium, calcium. So calcium is important in skeletal muscle contraction as well as cardiac muscle and smooth muscle, which is located in your vessel walls. Um, so in this case, we're going to be talking about the calcium channel blockers that lo are located on your heart and on your peripheral vessels in the smooth muscle. So if you bind to calcium channel receptors on your heart, an increased sympathetic nervous system response on your heart. We know you're going to see an increased heart rate, increased contractility, just like our inotropes in the beta category. If we bind to the calcium channel receptors on our vessels, we're going to increase the sympathetic nervous system response there, and we're going to see a lot of the things we saw with the alpha category squeeze. So there's one drug that's really obviously a calcium channel agonist and that is calcium. Which obviously will bind to calcium channels. Um, therefore you can give calcium and it will act as an inotrope when it's given IV. Um, we use this in the ICU a lot of times, especially at night if your blood pressure is low. Um, where I work, you can just order a calcium lab, an ionized calcium, and if it's low, you can give, ion uh, you can give calcium 
through the IV and a lot of times that will increase your blood pressure because it will increase your heart rate, increase your contractility, and also give your patient a little bit of squeeze vasoconstriction. Um, and that can help get you through the night before you have to call the doctor. Another drug that works um, to bind to calcium channels or increase your supply of calcium is digoxin or digitalis. Um, so digoxin is another inotrope because it increases heart rate. Well, it increases contractility. It makes your heart work more efficiently. Sometimes it can help decrease your heart rate if you're using it for something like atrial fibrillation. Um, it's an inotrope. It makes your heart work better. Um, so one trick for digoxin, um, if you don't already know it's an inotrope and that it increases uh, your calcium, is to think that if you've been out digging in the field, you might want, want a nice glass of cold milk to help refresh you. Um, technically, digoxin is in the cardiac glycosides category, class of drug, um, but it works by increasing calcium at the receptor site. And down below here, we've got calcium channel blockers. Which are found also on your heart and your vessels. Um, they work in the same places as your calcium channels are located. So that will decrease your sympathetic nervous system response at your calcium channels. Um, so you're going to have decreased heart rate, decreased contractility, Um, and vasodilation. So exactly the opposite of what calcium would do because it's blocking those receptors. So there's a couple different examples of calcium channel blockers and some of them work more directly to affect heart rate and others work more on the vasodilation side. So on the heart rate side here we have cardizem. which is also called diltiazem. Um, and that works more on the heart rate side, decreasing your heart rate. You see it a lot of times for atrial fibrillation. People will go on a diltiazem or cardizem drip. So you can remember that is a calcium channel blocker because it starts with CA, which is the abbreviation for calcium. New calcium 2 plus is the ion. So that's how you can remember that. On the vasodilation side, um, we have the peens. So amlodipine, clavidipine, And how I remember this is if you drink a lot of, of milk, which has calcium in it, you're going to have to be peeing that out pretty soon. Peen. Another calcium channel blocker is verapamil. And my trick for that is Vera and Pam um, are two old ladies who keep telling you to drink your milk. Um, I'm going to add nifedipine over here to your peens. So if you come across another drug that's not on this list but ends in um, peen, um, there's a good chance that it's also a calcium channel blocker. So keep in mind these endings can be very helpful. So that is calcium. And I'll scroll back up here to our chart that we've completed. So this is the vasoactive drugs series. Um, please comment below if you have any questions, if you found this helpful, if you have any uh, requests for other videos or mnemonics or memorization techniques you want to hear.
Thank you.